Hey everyone, welcome to my backyard and today I thought I would make this video out here and there's kind of a specific reason and there's just lots of room for me to explain why measurements of your body are important in basketball. So basically when it comes down to it, there's always going to be teams looking for the freak athlete and I don't mean that in any negative term. What I'm talking about is for example the Toronto Raptors just recently picked Scotty Barnes. And when I went to their coaching clinic and some of the things that they were looking at all the time is players who shoot the basketball well, which Scotty Barnes, in my opinion, is an okay three-point shooter. He's not great, but he's okay. However, they can always teach him that. Another thing that they really look at is the freak athlete in a sense. And what I mean by that is somebody who has measurements that are different than most others. So for example, he is a six foot nine, six foot 10 range athlete. However, he has a seven foot three to seven foot four wingspan. This is a massive plus four or five when it comes to wingspan, which is basically fingertip to fingertip versus your height. So for example, myself, I am six foot one and a half. I like to say I'm six foot two because I round up. And my wingspan is actually around six foot four to six foot four and a half. So I am a plus two plus three on my wingspan versus my height. That in for some teams could be classified as a freak athlete. However, there's more measurements than just that. So another measurement that some teams will really look at, and it really does seem like they did actually look at this when it comes to Scotty Barnes, is his hand. So for me, I have a length of around eight inches on my hand. It's about eight and a quarter inches. When it comes to my hand span, which is basically from the tip of my pinky pinky finger all the way to my the tip of my thumb that is the size and actually this hand is oddly enough smaller than my left uh, but this hand is about eight and three quarter inches and this hand is about nine and a quarter inches maybe it's because my thumb is double jointed and that may or may not help but that is my measurements and when you start comparing that to the players who were in this year's NBA draft, my hand span on my biggest hand is actually the same size as the average six foot seven player, six foot seven, six foot eight player in this year's NBA draft. That's why I can palm a basketball with pretty much no issues at all, unless there's a little bit of dust on it, like this one has a ton of gravel and dust on it. But I can still palm a ball with barely any issues at all. My hand actually spans two of these indents or these lines or whatever creases, whatever you wanna call it on the ball. My hand spans more than two of them. And same as my left hand, my left hand actually gets a little bit more of that ball. Now this hand, this ball has been in the gravel today, so it's a little bit dusty, but anyways, that is some of the things that some teams will look at. But there are ways of really getting around that and augmenting your, your, your hand size. You don't necessarily have to have a massive hand. Now, what a massive hand in basketball, NBA, that kind of thing will help you with is the ability to catch that pass, the ability to basically have a magnet in your hand. Kawhi Leonard is another example. I think his hand span is around 11 and a quarter inches, which is just massive. Scotty Barnes, his hand size I think is around 10 and a quarter inches so almost about an inch bigger than my hand so that is about there on my hand so still pretty big now I actually train a player who has the same size hands as me and he's even shorter than me so I, I have a feeling that he's going to be a fantastic player someday and front and he's also really young and Imagine having the same size hand as me. I'm six foot two. He is around five foot nine, five foot eight range, and he's about 12 years old. So big hands. Anyways, so one way that you can actually augment it is being able to have just strong hands in general. And how you can do that is one way is to get, you know, these things that you hold the weights on when it comes to the gym. This is a really small one because I just have this as a dumbbell thing in my house, but you can get like the bigger bench press ones that are a little bit bigger and you can just squeeze them. You can do this like every other day. I wouldn't do it every day. It's going to hurt your wrists. You'll probably get carpal tunnel if you do, do it too much, but you really want to do maybe 30 seconds and rest 
do the other hand 30 seconds and rest and that's going to really really strengthen your hand and you don't have to do all your fingers at once if you get a smaller one like this you can actually do a couple of fingers at once you can do one finger at once and you can really go down the line you can try and do oh i can't do that one but ring finger and thumb you can try to do that and you can really strengthen your hands that way this will allow you to get more rebounds this is going to allow you to get more passes and things like that so this even though this is like a 10 cent piece that comes with probably every single weight that you ever buy if you get the ones that don't change the weights uh, that is one fantastic way but there is one more measurement that a lot of teams especially younger teams prep schools i've seen do this measurement and other teams like that is your calf size so what does your calf size actually tell about you well the smaller your calf oddly enough the higher you're going to jump the reason behind this is because the larger your achilles tendon is the more springier you're going to be and you can actually check out the size of your calf quite easily and this is exactly how they do it so what you would want to do is lay down let's say i'm laying down right now i'll put my leg up over here even though this is not exactly the measurement that you would be looking at but you would have your your foot at a 90 degree ang angle and then you would then of course flex this muscle and what you would then do is try to get the bottom of it and you would then go to the bottom of your foot and i've done this measurement before and you would go to the bottom of your foot not to the bottom of your your shoe you'd want to do this with your shoe off i'm clearly not right now but you would want to do that measurement so i'm i can't remember the exact measurement but i remember the percentage and the percentage for me is 55 percent muscle and then 45 percent achilles if you have greater than 50 percent achilles that's the that's what a lot of teams look for and at that point you would then be classified as somebody who could potentially jump higher than most other players which is probably why i can still touch rim when i'm well overweight 280 pounds and i can still touch rim i shouldn't be able to do that at six foot two now if you are a younger player especially if you're younger it's a bit harder when you're older and of course we have to remember that this is also coming down to genetics as well but you could try to lengthen your achilles by merely doing achilles strengthening exercises and sometimes that does work we have to remember that it does also do come down to genetics some people are just not going to have shorter uh, calf muscles and longer achilles we usually see somebody who is in the nba who has like a 45 or a 46 or even a 48 inch vertical they're going to have mostly a 60 ish percent uh, achilles and 40 percent muscle uh, for those who maybe don't jump as high they're going to be about 40 percent uh, achilles and 60 percent muscle and you generally want to be more than 50 percent achilles because that's going to then allow you to jump higher and I'm about 55% Achilles myself so maybe that's why I can still kind of get up there and I'm nowhere close to being in shape yet or anymore I will be in shape again however these are some measurements that you could take of yourself uh, ways that you can get around it of course your hand size you don't necessarily have to have huge hands again that's genetics but if you can work on your wrist strength your hand strength that's really going to augment your ability to still perform better if not just as good if not better than those with larger hands and then of course when it comes to your calves what you're basically looking at is just a lot of quick reaction time jumping exercises plyometrics that's really going to work that uh, that muscle that's really going to work that achilles and you can get springy anyways i hope that this video has kind of given you some insights if it has hit that like button subscribe i'll see you guys again next time